If you've ever moaned that they don't make them like they used to, now's the time to eat your words, because British company Morgan do. The result is unlike anything else on sale. This is the three-wheeler. It costs £30,000 and is basically a brand new version of Morgan's first ever car from 1910. In many ways, they've made it exactly like they used to. A V-twin bike engine mounted in front of two wheels, which are controlled from inside a two-seat open cabin with power going to one rear wheel. There have been some 21st century upgrades, but we'll talk about those on the road because, if I'm honest, I just want to have a go. I guess the first thing you notice is the noise. It is quite a beautiful sounding thing. The exhaust is just over my right shoulder and all my right ear can hear is this. <laughs> you can see the front wheels, you can feel the heat of the exhaust, you can drag your knuckles along the tarmac. The engine is a two-cylinder, two-litre unit made by American company s and &S. It's only got 115 brake horsepower, but Morgan say it does 0 to 60 in four and a half seconds, which actually makes it about as quick as a BMW M3. If I'm honest, four and a half seconds feels a bit optimistic, but there's no denying it's got some clout. Just with a tiny amount of pedal effort, it takes off. And then as soon as it gets some revs on it, it picks up even more. This engine, more than any other I've ever driven, doesn't let you forget that you are being propelled by a series of small explosions. On to the transmission, a five-speed gearbox that's actually borrowed from a Mazda NX-5. I think this is where it's a little bit unfair to say that Morgan make it like they used to because the gearbox does feel totally 21st century. It's light, it's snicky, it's accurate. It feels just as good as it does in a Mazda MX-5. The gearbox may be modern, but you never escape the impression you're driving in a different era. Details like soft leather, simple dials and chrome mirrors set the scene further, and that's not all. As well as the obvious lack of roof, the Morgan also lacks any power steering, any servo assistance to the brakes, any traction control, and as the power gets sent via a belt to that one rear wheel under there, it could lead to some rather squirmy handling. Despite the simplicity of the chassis, you don't actually get that much feel through the steering wheel. You kind of have to guess how much grip you've got, which isn't very much. Also, the ride is, um, oh, how should we say this? Bloody hard. And finally, the unservo brakes really do need a proper stamp to get them to slow you down. Somehow though, despite it not being as good at all of those things as more modern cars are, there's something about the way it drives that makes you want to keep driving. It's hard to put your finger on what it is. No, it's not the last word in 21st century dynamics, but the three-wheeler can still make you grin like nothing else on the sun. If you're the type of person who likes to spend their 30 grand on a Lotus Elise or a Caterham, this isn't really for you. It hasn't got that level of accuracy or agility. However, if you're not fussed about going to track days, then this is a massive amount of fun. It is a lot of money to spend on a toy that only really makes sense in the countryside on a sunny day. But if you're in that league, You've got a sense of humour, and you like that noise, and I can't think of a better toy than this. Come on!